I recently bought myself a PlayStation 5, as the games that I wanted to play were all PS5 exclusives. I've always been an Xbox person, and I do still have one, but I just fancied a change. And I'm glad I did. Before consoles, going back to the first Xbox, I did use handheld gaming machines, and yes, I am old enough to remember the Nintendo Game Boy. But since the Game Boy, I've never really had a handheld gaming machine until now. I found out about the Backbone by chance actually, it was an Instagram advert and it promises to give you a near full PlayStation experience but without being tied to your console. The company seems to go for the Apple style packaging and nothing is different here. There's a quick start guide and here is a controller. Now this controller is really on brand with the PlayStation. Not only does it look like the official stock PlayStation controller, but it has a PlayStation logo on the back when it's extended. Included in the box is an adapter for the larger iPhones, such as the iPhone 13 Pro Max. And the adapter fits into the left hand side of the controller and it just makes sure that your phone has a snug fit and it doesn't wobble around the place. It isn't absolutely necessary, so if you do have an iPhone 13 Pro Max, you can use the controller without the adapter. But it does come free of charge, so in really, if I was you, I'd just use it. Now Android people, you're out of luck. I recorded this video a few days ago and at the time of making it, Backbone still only support the iPhone. Now setting up is easy. If you haven't already, head over to your PlayStation and enable Remote Play on your console. Download the Remote Play app to your phone along with the Backbone app. And when you've signed into the Remote Play app, it will ask you to connect to a network and your phone then just becomes a controller which basically streams whatever is going on your PS5 to the screen of your phone. Then it's a case of sticking your phone into the backbone and away you go. In terms of the backbone app, you'll notice that it's a subscription service. And from the get go, it's only going to ask you to sign up to a £49 yearly subscription service. Now I didn't do this. I'm only using the PlayStation at the moment so it's not worth it. But if you do have the time for multiple platforms such as your Xbox, Stadia, iOS gaming, perhaps Steam, then it's probably worth pulling all those together into one app which is what this does. If you don't want to subscribe, please don't think that the app is useless because you're going to need it, so don't delete it. You're going to need it to calibrate your joysticks or submit warranty claims if the hardware goes wrong for whatever reason. So what's this thing like to game on? It literally only has one job doesn't it, so you'd be pleased to know it's really very very good indeed. A lot of that comes down to ergonomics. You're going to be holding this thing in your hand for a while. It's its job. It's only got one job. So it has to be comfortable to hold. It's light and very, very compact. When it's not being used, it collapses back in on itself by some quite strong springs. Well, that collapsing mechanism will put you into a false sense of familiarity though. The joysticks without a phone in them are further away from each other than the PS5 sticks. That's clear. You can see that as soon as you take it out of the box. The PS5 controller has been fine tuned over what 20 years and it's become the standard for joypads really. But on the backbone the joysticks are a couple of miles apart when your phone's in there. Especially if you're using the iPhone 13 Pro Max so it's something to think about. You do get used to it but it's not quite the same as playing with a normal PlayStation 5 controller. Think more Nintendo Switch than PlayStation 5 and you probably won't go far wrong. The whole thing feels really premium and you could be fooled into thinking that Sony made this themselves. But the premium feel has perhaps gone a little bit too far with the buttons. They're solid, they give good feedback and they are very very responsive. But they are quite loud, just have a listen to this. The reality is of course that if you're playing with headphones on to be polite or whatever surroundings you're in, you might actually be annoying somebody with the clicky click click noises. And what about latency? Well Backbone will tell you that you'll enjoy a low latency connection and in the main I can say that that is true but of course that does depend on your connection in the first place. I've got 900 megabits per second broadband here and to support that 900 megabits per second broadband I've got BT's latest and greatest home hub which is probably the best router I've ever used. But on top of that it does depend on what you're playing. Spider-Man Miles Morales runs really well with almost no latency and I've enjoyed playing that on the backbone. But games that are played over multiplayer where your survival and indeed enjoyment rely on fast response times 
I found that there's too much latency. I've been playing Call of Duty Vanguard recently and team deathmatch is brutal at the best of times but unfortunately on the backbone I haven't been able to cope with everybody else so I've just ended up switching back to the console to play that game. So I've already got an endless list of devices to charge in this house so having another one wasn't really something that was particularly welcome. Now I didn't know until I actually received this thing that actually it doesn't require charging ever. The backbone will draw power from whatever phone is plugged into it which I think is a really good idea. Of course doing it this way means that it isn't able to put power back into your phone. Quite the opposite actually it will drain your battery. But the good thing is there is a power pass through built in. If your phone is going flat and you plug your standard lightning cable into the bottom corner then you're going to get some extended gaming. On the other side there's a headphone jack to minimise you annoying other people but remember those buttons. Now as for the buttons, all the buttons and bumpers are where you would expect them. It would be odd if really they strayed away from the PS5 controller completely given it's heavily stylized on that controller and works with that console. There are some different buttons though. This orange button will launch the Backbone app and I've pressed this by accident a couple of times now and it's opened the app which gets a bit annoying to be honest especially since you can't remap that button to do something else. Next to that is a button that will bring up the pause options and the two buttons on the left will record gameplay to your phone in 1080p but this only works with your membership. If you don't have membership that button will take a screenshot and save it to your camera roll. There is no PlayStation button though, which is a bit of a miss, so you'll have to press the three dots on the screen which will bring up the menu which will then allow you to get into any of the home screen content. I'd like Byteborn to implement a change in which we can remap this orange button to be a physical PlayStation menu button. So how much does all this cost? Well at the time of making the video this PlayStation 5 version cost £99 or $99 US dollars and yes the Brits are getting stiffed again but in fairness I think £99 about right any more than that and you could probably call it a little bit too expensive it's added more convenience to the PlayStation usage and it's given my daughter something to play with too so that's a win-win so that's it if you've made it all the way to the end thank you if you've been to my channel before, welcome back, and if you haven't, please consider subscribing, and I'll see you in the next video.